the junction of Harewood Avenue in the High Street, our walk takes us left into the High Street itself. Morning. Interesting features to note are a fine mock Tudor frontage to the video shop, a striking orange fascia to the job centre, <laughs> and 15p off frozen peas at the mini mart. <laughs> While stocks last. Mrs. Bidmead. What's all this then? It's a face in the crowd competition. It's to encourage people to use the centre. Oh, I see. Another one of Brittus's daft ideas, is it? Mr. Brittus does not have daft ideas. Mr. Brittus always has good ideas. He is an ideas man. Oh, yes. Like his archery classes for the elderly. That was not Mr. Brittus's fault. That arrow could have gone anywhere. <laughs> and I happen to know that he paid for the funeral out of his own pocket. So this fellow wins a year's free admission to all our facilities. And a magnificent prize it is too. A man would kill for a prize like that. I'm sorry, I'm not having it. It's not using my sauna for free. Can I have a pen, please, Carol? Will one of Ben's felt tips do? Or crayons? Or magic markers? Indelible, water washable, they come in three colours, blue, black and red. This will be fine. No one asked me about this. Mrs Bigmead, have you taken leave of your senses? After a further 642.75 metres, we pass the Ingle Nook home for the elderly, so tragically destroyed by a stray flaming arrow. <laughs> the building is now being restored to its former glory. Excuse me please, young man. I've got to come through, I'm sorry. You're in the way. You must have accurate measurements. This, then, is Frenchman's Hill. Famous for... It's French men. <laughs> so, as we near the end of walk number 38 from the precinct to the gyratory system, one is reminded of Mahatma Gandhi's famous words. Oi! I knew the Perka runs a leisure centre! <laughs> I should leave that if I were you, Colin. You're only making it worse. You saw it, Carol. That was a piece of pure, premeditated vandalism. Oh, stop it, Ben! Now, kiss and make up. Come along, darling. Big hugs. That's right. Breathe deeply. Breathe deeply, good boy. <laughs> what a caring mother you are, if I may say so, Carol. Oh, thank you, Colin. I'm giving Ben chicken pox at the moment. I'm sorry? Well, Ben's never had it. The twins have, but Ben hasn't. And it's very important that he gets it out of the way while he's still a child. So I've invited his little friend Sophie around, and she's absolutely covered in spots and highly <laughs> contagious. So, with a bit of luck, he might come down with a really serious infection. I am lost in admiration for you, Carol. Thank you, Colin. Belinda says she does it twice a day. Meditation's supposed to relieve stress and solve problems. Well, I don't see how sitting around with her eyes closed can solve your problems. It's a load of old nonsense. Shh. It's all right. She can't hear me. Yes, she can. Well, I'm going to join the meditation class this morning. It could help reduce my anxiety levels. Are you going to do table tennis? Gosh, I feel better for that. Relaxed, calm, filled with a deep sense of inner peace. What am I down for this morning, Gavin? Uh, martial arts. Great. <laughs> Interesting walk, Mr. Brittus. Incident pack, Colin. No, not interesting per se. Certainly not as interesting as walk number 27. Ah, yes. The roundabouts of Whitbury, their verges and their bollards. <laughs> Fascinating stuff. A heady brew for Eddie Walker. Give me a hand with this, will you? Certainly, Mr. Brittus. I've done two more walks myself, Mr. Brittus, uh, for your research. <laughs> A good man. Debriefing my office, ten minutes. Well, cool, Mr. Brittus. I've also rigged up the face in the crowd display. But I'm afraid I have to report that Mrs. Bitmead has defaced the poster. Dear, oh dear, oh dear. Shall I call the police? Not yet, Colin. I'd better look into the matter first. If it should come to court, Mr. Brittus, Carol here was a witness to the whole event. Is this true, Carol? Yes, Mr. Brittus. In fact, it was Carol who lent her the pen. Really, Carol? <laughs> Well, I suppose... So I... you are, in fact, an accessory to this alleged act of vandalism? Well, I suppose... I would be careful what you say, Carol. I shall, of course, be holding a full internal inquiry, but I'd strongly advise you not to say anything at all till you've spoken to your legal representative. I tell you, I'm dead on my feet. I've walked miles and miles and miles. He won't let me use the car anymore. Why not? Oh, it's Gordon's walking for health programme. It's killing me. 
He had this stupid idea. He put it to the European Commission. It's now a Euro directive. He's got to find 50 interesting walks in Whitbury. The only interesting walk in Whitbury is the walk out of Whitbury. <laughs> can't take much more. Do you want to try some of the green ones? No, thanks. <laughs> joining in the meditation week. They've got a swami coming in. No. I tried it once years ago. Didn't do anything for me. Pills are more reliable. <laughs> Swami arrived yet? Carol? We haven't had any deliveries this morning. No, the Swami. He's the Hindu meditation teacher. Why is he called a Swami? It means master, Gavit. He's from the East. When he comes to him, would you take him to the dance studio? I've got jiu-jitsu. Carol, what's the matter? You seem a bit upset. I don't think I can say anything without my lawyer present. What? I'm being investigated. Investigated about what? Morning, love. Um, welcome to Whitbury Newtown Leisure Centre. How may she help you? <laughs> Harry Johnson, I'm here to run meditation classes. Oh, great. Tim Whistler, I'm really looking forward to them. I'll show you the room. Hey, 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 I thought you said he was from the East. He is. Scarborough. <laughs> Hello. It's me. Is this you? Yes, it's me. <laughs> Who do I see? about the prize. <laughs> What's that old map she wanted? Excellent. And Brussels phone to see how you're getting on with your walks for health. Apparently, they're getting a very good response from leisure centres throughout Europe. Good. There's mad buggers wandering all over the place. <laughs> and the Germans have already marched through Poland. <laughs> yeah, it's all right, Julie. That's the commentary for walk number 38. More? I couldn't induce myself banging away on that keyboard all day, every day. Uh, Julie. What? Send the copy to the liaison officer for the Ramblers Association. I'm keeping them au fait with developments. Yeah, yeah. Right, Colleen, your two walks, please. Great, Mr Briggs. The first one has something for nature lovers, as well as those of a scientific bend, as we perambulate from the sewage works to the abattoir. <laughs> mm, might have limited appeal, Colleen. What about the second one? Ah, now that one is very different. That one runs from the abattoir to the sewage works. <laughs> Gives you an entirely different perspective. And you've taken down some notes, have you? Full detailed notes, Mr Brittas. Unfortunately, this bit here might be a little bit difficult to read. You see, as I was jotting down my notes in the offal room, <laughs> I happened to step on a piece of stray bovine liver, which is a lot slippier than you might think, and found myself inexorably propelled into a vat of steaming entrails. <laughs> Hence the slight discoloration round there. Colin, I'll read what I can and give you an answer by Thursday. Whatever you think, Mr Bredos. You see, what we're concentrating on now, Colin, is historical walks. Whitbury through the ages. Whitbury in bygone days. Wither Whitbury. See this map here? This is Whitbury before the leisure centre was even built. Look, just fields, orch... And what's this? A public right of way? Colin, we have a problem. <laughs> so, if St Mark's is over there and the railway line is over there, that means the public right of way must come around there, then through the reception. The... What is it, Carol? <laughs> Speak up. Well, I know you said I wasn't to say anything till I'd spoken to my legal representative, Miss Briss. That was only with regard to matters pertaining to my inquiry vis-a-vis -vis the poster. This is to do with the poster, Miss Briss. Right, better keep stum, get a lawyer. But it is. <laughs> <clears throat> Hello there. <laughs> You're Carol's solicitor, are you? No, I'm a plumber. <laughs> uh, Carol, I don't think this man is qualified to represent you. No, no. Is this you? It's me. <laughs> Sorry. The photograph there. That's me. I'm the face in the crowd. <clears throat> Got any proof of that? <laughs> what do you mean, proof? That's me with my family. Oh, I've only got your word for that. I need some sort of corroboration. Well, use your eyes. It's bloody obvious. <laughs> Don't adopt that tone with me. Thank you very much. An extremely valuable prize is on offer, and I need to know I've got the right person. And frankly, you've done your claim no good at all by coming in here and posing as her lawyer. <laughs> Come on, Colin. We've got a path to follow. No, I'd much rather be a chef. Oh, stressful. Oh, I panic a lot. Well, my problem is, you see, I've got... I've got anarachnophobia. 
Ah, oh, you're frightened of spiders. No, I'm frightened of men in anoraks. <laughs> you can't be frightened of men in anoraks. Oh, well, I am. I used to have these nightmares when I was little. The child psychiatrist said it was to do with death. The grim reaper, the hooded figure, anoraks. I just panic. Well, meditation could certainly help with that. It can give you a sense of inner peace. You could look on it as a kind of stress management. <laughs> Moon Maidens! <laughs> <laughs> and then it goes over this way, through this door, and then it goes straight on through this wall. Woo! Got it? It's going to have to come down. But behind this wall is the lady's toilet. It can't be helped, Collie. This is a public footpath right of way, and it's my legal obligation to make sure the public have unfettered access to it. For a start, I'm sure the Ramblers Association will want to exercise their rights. And rumble through the ladies. Indeed, Connie. <laughs> and you know what they're like, a militant bunch. As soon as they find out about it, they'll be through here like a dose of salt. Ah, but how are they going to find out? I'm going to have to tell them, Connie. <laughs> you maiden, you're the only woman I ever really wanted. I spent years looking for you. I'd given up hope. Oh, come on, it's just a one-night stand. Oh, really? That night was magical. I was devastated when you'd left in the morning without saying a word. I didn't know where you'd gone. To Grimsby, I think. I had a holiday job at the canning factory. You do remember that night, don't you? Oh, yes. Most of it, I expect. What do you remember? Well, we met at a party, didn't we? No. no I took you to the party. We met at a folk club. Did we? And the bonfire on the beach. Oh, yes. And there was lots of singing and dancing. Yeah. <laughs> we... Uh, we clicked straight away, didn't we? Well, not straight away. I mean, we waited till after the party. <laughs> <laughs> and you remember on the beach, everyone waving lighters in the air and giving us their blessing. They really did that sort of thing in those days, did they? Uh, was that when that old hippie friend of yours pretended to marry us? The Reverend Jackson, yeah. <laughs> Reverend Jackson? Why did you call him that? Because well, that's what he was. <laughs> Still is. Actually, he's the Bishop of Maidstone now. I mean, it was real. Well, of course. You're my wife, Moon Maiden. <laughs> so, Gordon, I mean, what about Gordon and, and the children? I, I've got a ring. I've been to marriage guidance. Not with me. No. Yeah, what was your name, by the way? <laughs> Harry. Harry Johnson. Pleased to meet you, Harry. I'm Helen Brittus. Oh, no, I suppose I'm Helen Johnson Brittus. So are you saying there's a public footpath running through here and anyone can walk along it? Precisely. Without paying to come in, Mr Brittus? Yeah, now we're at the nub of it. Any member of the public wishing to use leisure centre facilities must pay in the usual way. Any member of the public wishing to use the public right of way does not need to pay in any way. But any member of the public using the public right of way and then straying into leisure centre facilities would then have to pay in the usual way. Which is why Colin is down there at this precise moment marking out the route clearly. It runs through reception, through the staff restroom. Through the staff restroom? Hey, that's cool. Through the ladies' toilet. Through the ladies' toilet? Now that is what you call an inconvenience. Nice one, Tim. Yo. What's coming to you? In a piece. What if someone wants to spend a penny? Ah, oh, then they have to spend £1.80, the normal admission fee. No. I mean, what if you're in there and people start walking through? Ah, oh, now that is why I'm introducing a system of stewarding along the route. So that in addition to your normal jobs, you'll all be marshals or stewards for your own particular area. Is this the silly internal inquiry you've been talking about? No, it is not, Mrs Bidmead. Regrettably, I've had to put that on hold because another matter has superseded it, but I will be resuming it in due course. You know, you're a very sad man. <laughs> well, I'm not very happy with you, Mrs Bidmead. Oh, what have you called me up here for, then? I'm not going over old ground. Gavin will fill you in later. Now, that really would be a first. <laughs> you! Are you on drugs? No, I've been meditating. There you are. It's me. Satisfied now? How dare you burst into my office in a semi-naked state? Who do you think you are? Is this you? It's me. I'm him. Find me something. I'm sorry, you bear no resemblance at all to the man in the photograph. For a start, he's been swimming. He's got wet hair. Well, would it help if I wet myself? 
<laughs> Gavin, escort this man from the premises, please. He's an obvious imposter. Do this sort of thing for a living, do you? What sort of thing? I suppose you're one of those professional lookalikes. <laughs> well, frankly, you're no good at it. You're supposed to look like someone famous. Gavin, oh, chuck oh, him out. Yes, Mr. Prince. I'll be back. Who has? Princess Diana. <laughs> You. <laughs> a cup of tea would be most welcome. <laughs> I've been here since 4 a.m. I'm clearing the path of all obstructions. I hope I didn't disturb you at all. No, not at all. I've been up most of the night with Ben. Actually, I'm rather pleased. He's got the chicken pox. Oh, good. He's covered in spots. <laughs> He's more spot than Ben at the moment. Ah, but from now on, Carol, he'll be immune. He's building up his antibodies. It's something I try to do myself. What is? Antibody building. I try to give myself a disease on a regular basis so that I can build up an immunity to it. As I always say, a disease a day keeps the doctor away. <laughs> You're giving Ben a fine start in life. Thank you. As a matter of fact, I've got something for him. That's very kind. <clears throat> Here we are. Oh. <clears throat> Foot and mouth disease, <laughs> spine fever, and frax. Sorry. I've had them all myself, Carol. And if you'd like Ben to have them, I'd be only too pleased to give him a dose. No, 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 no thank <laughs> you. It's very kind. But no, thank you. As you wish. But if you are thinking of vaccinations in the future, remember, I can lay my hand on most diseases. Thank you. Meditation really sets me up for the day. Fills me with get up and go. Well, it hasn't filled Tim with get up and go, has it? It's filled him with sit down and stop. <laughs> Tim, can you help, please? Oh, no, thanks. I'm fine. I'm preparing for the class. I'm emptying my head. <laughs> well, that won't take long, will it? <laughs> Look, just get off your butt and help Linda. Calm down, Gavin. What you need is some stress management. Yeah, well, if it wasn't management, I wouldn't get the stress, would I? <laughs> oh, hello. Is this where they're doing the meditation class? Yes. Are you going to join us? Well, yes, I thought I might give it a try. You know him, don't you, the teacher? Yes, we have met under different circumstances. You'll find he's very good, very thorough. Gets down to the nitty-gritty. Yeah. <laughs> What's he called you? Oh, I don't know. Moon Maiden. Yes, that was it. Why did he call you that? Well, years ago at a, at a wedding, somebody said Moon Maiden, and apparently I did. <laughs> I have spoken to the Ramblers Association and they will be exercising their rights to walk the path during the course of the afternoon. I had no choice. I realise your position as borough engineer means that you've got to approve all alterations to the centre, but I was faced with a legal obligation. What else could I do? I will treat that suggestion with the contempt it deserves. <laughs> of yours, walk number 38. Good. Now, do you want me to type it all out? Yes, please. Including, oi, are you the pillock who runs the leisure centre? <laughs> oh. And how do you spell, uh? Julie, what are you talking about? You know the bit where he thumps you. Julie, use your common sense. Confine yourself to my descriptive passages, please. Right. Oh, by the way, there's a pervert running amok in the ladies' toilet. <laughs> Come on, Ben. Pink's a lovely colour. It suits you. Look, don't argue with Mummy. Just put on the calamine lotion. <laughs> oh, Miss Ritters. Not now, Carol. I've had a perv alert. Oi! <laughs> now that is just plain pathetic. I want the prize. I want it now. Mr. Bridas, I'm getting on famously with this little beauty. Can you hear that, Mr. Bridas? Colin, I've just had a report. There's a pervert in the ladies. No, I'll get him out for you, Mr. Bridas. <laughs> no, Colin, they think you're the pervert. 
It's all right, madam. There's nothing to be alarmed about. My deputy manager was merely sawing his way through the toilet. <laughs> you see, I'm afraid that you are at this precise moment on a public right of way. But you can come out now. It's quite safe. I'm telling you. I want it. <laughs> now. <laughs> He has blown it up out of all proportion. Yes, he does that. He is so petty, small-minded, child. She's so... I'm sorry, I shouldn't talk about your husband like that. Oh, it's OK. He's not my husband. <laughs> well, of course, he is my husband. We are married, but not legally. What do you mean? To someone else. My first husband. Well, no. My first, first husband. I've forgotten all about him. It turns out... I'm a bigamist. <laughs> I've met the man I was married to before I was married to the man I was married to before I was married to Gordon. Sorry, you've lost me. Yeah, I've lost me too, but it has its good side. It means I'm probably not married to Gordon. What are you going to do? I don't know. I don't know what I'm going to do. What would you do? Do you mean, would I leave Gordon? Yeah. And go off with someone else? A man I had forgotten all about? A man who is, in fact, a complete stranger? <sighs> yeah. Yeah, I'd leave Gordon. <laughs> I hope that lady will be all right. The paramedic was exaggerating. People recover from catatonic states all the time. <laughs> now, put that arrow down there, please, to signify the path goes into the restroom. Stop that, then. That's a silly place to put a thermometer. <laughs> right, Carol, if that phony lawyer comes back fraudulently claiming the prize, I want to know about it. Yes, Miss Miss, 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 I know your inquiry is on hold, but, you see... It wasn't my pen. It was Ben's pen. Whoa. Trying to lay the blame on a child, Carol. It won't wash, you know. It will, Mr. Briss. It's water washable. It's gone. Where's the poster gone? I don't know, Mr. Briss. I haven't seen anything. I've been here taking Ben's temperature. Right, Carol. A tannoy announcement, please. Any member of staff who knows anything about the disappearance of the poster is to report to me immediately. I'm prepared to grant a two-hour amnesty, and within that period, I expect Mrs. Big Me to own up. Yes, Miss. Any member of staff who knows anything about the disappearance of the poster, you are all Harry. 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 Hari, 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 Hari. Well, Jamie, Jamie, arms wide open, head back, a little bit lower. Steph, okay. <laughs> Mrs. Bidme didn't take it. Not as far as I know, Mr. Brittus, no. Right, everybody, positions! I might have known, it's you! <laughs> That's what I've been trying to tell you! <laughs> so now you've added theft to your list of criminal activities, have you? That poster is leisure centre property. It's also central to an inquiry that I'm currently... You've really done it now! How can I continue my inquiry now that you've destroyed the vital evidence? You are guilty of perverting the course of justice, so I have no alternative but to ban you from this leisure centre for the rest of your natural life. Mr. Britters, I've hit a bit of a snag. Unfortunately, Gavin, I can't close it off. It's a public right of way. There's foot and mouth disease in there and swine fever. And anthrax. Anthrax is lethal! No, no, Gavin, it's not that bad. I was a bit chesty with it for the first week or two. But of course, the malignant pustules were a bit irritating. Especially the one right on the end of my... Yes, thank you, Colin. <laughs> so you're telling me that in there at the moment these serums are inert? Yes, Mr Britas. Inertish. Oh, my God! Right, Carol, no more admissions from now on, please. But what about the Ramblers, Miss Briss? Initiate emergency procedure 34B. Ah, the Veruca code. Precisely. <laughs> I think you have to come away with me. Don't you see? We were meant for each other. Look, I just don't know, Harry. But, but, but if I were to come with you, it would just be for a trial period, say, three, four, maybe five years. Oh, <laughs> mm. Oh, no, I haven't. Well, 
welcome to the Whitbury Newtown Leisure Centre European Walk for Health. Now, anyone ever had foot and mouth disease, swine fever, hands <laughs> and All right, form an orderly queue in that direction, please. Carol, spray them. <laughs> right, Gavin, get ready to take them through the dip, please. Yes, Mr. Brutus. <laughs> Colin, over to a you. Good afternoon. Lovely day for a walk. What about me? I'm immune. Mrs. Julie. What does rescinded mean? Rescinded, it means uh, repealed, uh, revoked, cancelled. All oh, right. Well, the Chief Planning Officer's been on, and he says that's what's happened to your public right of way. It was repealed, cancelled, and thinged when the leisure centre was built. Aha. Uh -huh. Right. He also said you were cretinous. But it's all right, I know what that means. <laughs> Do you know what the implications are? Indeed I do, Gavin. It means all those people are here without having paid. Get rid of them. Yes. <laughs> We're going to have to tell him, you know. What, oh, Gordon? Mm. Do we have to? Yes. He won't like it. Trust me. Think nothing. Think everything. Think darkness, think light. Yo! <laughs> oh, God, no! It's a hooded figure! It's death! He's come for me! I'm panicking! I'm panicking! I'm panicking! Let's go, please! Hey, in a moment, my darling, I'm just getting rid of these trespassers. Out you go, please! Out you go! Out you go there! Right, Gemmy, we are now in a position to close the sensor on the grounds that it is, in fact, a plague zone. Right, Mr. Bruce. Right. Gordon, could you come here a minute, please? Yes, my angel. Look, I don't know quite how to put this Oi. Down, but I've decided. Get up. <laughs> Not bad enough. You are banned for life! Gemmy, I thought we'd thrown him out! You can't ban me. I'm on a public right of way. Yeah. <laughs> that is where you are wrong, Squire. Gavin, eject him forthwith. I'm panicking! I'm panicking! I'm panicking! I've seen him! The Grim Reaper! We're all going to die! <laughs> come to this. In a desperate attempt to claim the prize, you've killed the real winner! Any more for the sheep dip? Colin, call the police. With pleasure, Mr. Brittus. We're finally going to arrest Mrs. Bidmead, are we? 